I'm Jen from Fabulous Paper Emporium. So excited to be here with you today because we are going to go through the steps to make this beautiful double panel bridge card. So today we're going to be using Cartabella's Spring Market Paper. Absolutely love it. Normally not a big fan of, you know, pastels and florals, but I love, love, love this card, this paper pack rather. There's a lot of beautiful paper in here and it obviously makes a stunning card. So uh, first I'm gonna go through the card, the final project, and then we'll go through some of the tools, and then obviously we'll get into the paper and the sizes. So here we go. So reason for the name, double panel, is we've got two panels on either side with a bridge. This pink piece holds it all together, so that folds up. And then we have another panel in the middle. So what I've done here is instead of using the same pattern is I've used the same, obviously the same cardstock from, from the same package um, or collection rather. So this one is just have, has the floral incorporated into it. This one is just the leaf. And when you flip that up, you have your message. So beautiful card, really, really happy with the end results. And now we're going to go through some of the tools that you'll be needing today. So apart from the designer paper, in which case you might need two different styles, depending on what your preference is, but it's nice to have a little bit of maybe contrast. So I've used an olive green for my base as well as pink. So you would need two solid colors as well as a piece of white cardstock. And then we need a designer paper or two, depending on your preference. You'll need a paper trimmer, something like this. If you don't happen to have a paper trimmer, scissors, a ruler, and a pencil work equally as well. You'll need a scoreboard. In this case, we have our handy dandy score pal in eights. We will need some liquid glue. So for this purpose, we have our Barely Art glue. We will need an, some ink and a dabber. And I will get into what the use is, what that you is gonna be used for, sorry. <laughs> and then a bone folder. If you happen to have a score pal um, or scoreboard that comes with a some kind of, of uh, tool, then you can usually use that for your bone folder. Or if you don't happen to have one, then another bone folder obviously works equally as well. Okay, so let's move all this out of the way. And then we'll get into the pieces and the sizes. All right, let's move that. Okie dokie. So for the bottom, we have this lovely olivey green. And this piece is cut at five and a half by eight and a half. And we will be scoring this together at four and a quarter. We have the base to our front panel. That is this part right here. I don't know if I point to it, there we go. This panel, this panel right here, and that is cut at three and a half by two and three quarters. Then for the pink pieces, we will need four pieces, and these are for our side panels, both front and back. So these panels are cut at one and one eighth by four and one eighth. Then we'll need the bridge part, and this piece is cut at one by five and three eighths. We have this top panel, which sits right there. This particular piece is cut at three and three eighths by two and five eighths. And then we have this middle piece and this one we're going to need two pieces because I've done a mat for the top panel as well as the bottom. And this one is cut at two and three quarters by four and one eighth. Then we have our lovely designer paper. So for your side panels, you are going to need, I've got that extra, you're going to need four pieces and these four pieces are going to be cut at one inch by four inches and then the middle panel so this is the one where i differed so this is a different uh design paper and this one is cut at two and five eighths by four inches 
and this one sits just right here. Perfect. All right, let's get started. So we're going to take our green, the base. In my case, it is green. <laughs> And that green piece is going to be scored at four and a quarter. So we're going to lay that on our score pal, four and a quarter. We're going to make a couple of passes. Fabulous. And then we're going to put that back away because just the one, one time we need to score today. That makes a nice folded in half. Perfect. So this is when I get out my bone folder. Make sure that we burnish that edge really well. So you have a nice crisp fold. Perfect. So there we go for our base. And then um, as far as the panels go, we are now, now going to need to create the two panels that work or that move independently of this other piece, which is our front. So we're gonna be cutting those two panels. So again, either if you have your ruler, if that's all you have is a ruler and a pencil and pair of scissors, that works, like I said, equally as fine as having the paper trimmer. So what we're gonna do here, I'm just gonna work this upside down. So this is gonna be my top, just so that you can see. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to the four and a quarter inch. So this is four and a quarter. So I move that over to four and a quarter, making sure that my blade is all the way at the top if you're using your paper trimmer. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna cut as far as that score line goes. So you can check a little bit, see how far you've made it without moving the paper. And if you've come to the score line, you're good to go. I just need to go a little bit further. There we go. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip over the card. And again, go to the four, uh, sorry, the one and a quarter. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing. And this will make our panels on both sides. Perfect. Alrighty. So now this is what our card looks like. We've got the two panels on the side and the center panel. Excellent. Okay, so now we can start our layering. There's a lot of layering that needs to be done. So I will start, before I actually get to layering, there is one thing that I did wanna mention, and this is where your ink and your dabber come into play. So if you've noticed on these pieces, I have inked up the edges. I have mentioned this before in, in one or maybe two of my other videos. And this is just to, it adds a little bit of make dimension to the pieces and it just adds a little bit of something. So if you see this piece has not been done, whereas this piece has. And I'll just show you really quickly what I mean by inking up the edges. So I would take my dabber, this is obviously one that I've used with this color before. Vintage Photo, I believe, yes. So this is a Tim Holtz Distressed Ink, and it's Vintage Photo. It's probably my all-time favorite. It's one that I go to and reach for all the time, and it just seems to go with everything. So when you're inking up your edges, you want to keep your dabber pretty much um, perpendicular to your piece of paper looking for it and parallel was not the right word so you want to keep that per perpendicular so you're really really just putting a little bit of ink on the edge of that paper and it really does it makes it makes it all the difference in the world so you don't need to really you're not the aim is not to get it on the face of the of the cardstock it's just to ink up the edge get rid of the white core. And for a lot of, of darker paper, this one has white in the background, so it's not as noticeable. But for those that have white cores and they're really dark on the outside, it does make a huge difference. And you could use, for this one, you could use pink or green, whatever your heart's desire. In this case, I kind of go back to my trusty photo, uh, vintage photo 
ink. So we're done with that. So I'm going to set that aside because I know I had left one extra panel. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to be layering my pieces. As I'm layering, we'll just do a little bit of quick mo, fast mo. <laughs> it's not slow mo. That's definitely for sure. And I will be back with you just as soon as possible. Okay, so now that I'm done with these panels, I'm gonna do some other layering as well. So the other layering that we have is we're gonna take our pink and the second design paper, if you've chosen to go with the second design paper, and you're gonna layer that as well. And then the last little bit of layering that we have to do is the very front, I guess, card piece that is gonna sit on top of the bridge piece and we're just gonna go ahead and layer that. Okay, perfect. So now that all of our pieces are layered, I'm gonna do a little bit of decorating on this front panel. And I am reaching again for my trusty element sticker page that comes with the collection kit. And again, you've got a lot of different options. Beautiful Day, Friends are the Sunshine of Life, which I really do love that one. I think it's going to be a little bit too big. So I think for today, I'm going to choose the, I think I'm going to do the Joy. Really like that. It is a joyful day today. And instead of just sticking this directly onto my panel, I'm going to reach for some of my foam stickers. So you can buy these, and I apologize, I didn't go through this when I was going through all my tools, just because it just occurred to me. So you can get these foam stickers, they're double sided. And so we're going to stick that on there. We're going to use two of the bigger ones and two of the smaller ones. Perfect. And there we go. So when we're going to do our best to get this right in the middle, it just adds a little bit of dimension to our card. So that's beautiful as it is. I really do love that, that particular, that particular sentiment. So we're going to set that to the side and now we can start layering our pieces onto our card base. And that will be the center piece, obviously it goes right in the middle. And then we'll be putting our panels to the side. So again, reaching for our liquid glue, we are going to apply a nice layer of glue going from edge to edge, all the way in the middle. Love the glue, the liquid glue, because it allows you some of that time to get it centered to where you're really happy with it. <clears throat> Push that down. Again, you can go over it with your bone folder. Make sure that you've got the glue. It spreads it out that way. Same thing with the brayer. Now we're gonna do our side panels. There we go, right down the middle. Lots of gluing in this one for sure, but I think the end results are just fabulous. Love it. And this would be so pretty for Mother's Day or birthday for that special woman in your life, whether it's your mother or grandmother, friend, what have you. Perfect. So then what we're going to be doing for these side panels 
is the best way to kind of gauge as to where it's going to be. I would flip, obviously we need to flip those up, but I would flip this middle panel down. And this way it gives you a little bit of a guide in terms of where to place the side panels. So we're going to do the same as we did for the front, giving it a little bit, just a little bit of space all the way around. And then we're going to do the left side. Whoopsie. I didn't quite have the glue touching the page. Not a biggie. Oops, there we go. Excellent. And then we have our two side panels that are basically covered when the card is closed. So the next piece that we need to get working on is now the bridge component. So for the bridge component, when you flip your card this way, so you've got your two panels, but your middle panel is tucked in inside, this bridge is going to sit right around there. I think that's about roughly where I have it on my other card. <clears throat> and you can, of course, move this up or down. We're going to apply glue just to the left and just to the right. That is it. Definitely do not, do not, donut. I think I have donuts on the brain. Um, definitely don't need it to be in the middle because then it's going to glue to, it's going to adhere to your center panel and that, you know, it, uh, it would no longer be a bridge panel at that point. And then the last thing that we're going to be doing is adhering our front message to the bridge. And by doing that, we are going to put some glue right along the middle. It extends a little bit past. If you wanted to get out your ruler, you could certainly mark on either side how far over you need to go, but I'm well within where I need to be for this. And then we're gonna flip that over, whoops apply a little bit of pressure. Again, we've got it, uh, we've got these top sentiment popped up on dimensionals. So it, uh, you don't want to go too rough when you're, when you're pressing down. There we go. So our front is coming together. One thing I did want to mention before I start going off and I finish and I forget to mention this at all with your paper packs and with your collection kits you do get these journaling journaling cards <laughs> say that five times fast um and with these journaling cards we're just a little bit wider than where we need to be for this particular project so if you were able to or if you really liked this particular one you could easily trim off either side to where it would fit on the very front and you could easily use these. So it's a great use for these journaling cards. If you're kind of at a loss for how to use them, this is a great application for that. And uh, I just hadn't done it for this particular card. Um, and then the last piece that we have is our white piece. And I apologize, I have not cut a white piece. I'll be right back. Okay, then I'm back. And here we go. So this is the middle, the top panel that you can do whatever writing you wanted to. We're going to just layer that onto our pink card. Move that around so we like the placement. And then we're going to put this down right in the middle, the only spot that we've got left to put anything on. Okay, let's move that over. We want that right in the middle, uh, as centered as you could possibly get. Perfect. And then what I did, all I did here in my original one is I got a couple of stickers again from the sticker pack and you can grab, I really like these rain boots. They're really cute. 
So I think I'm going to put a pair of rain boots on these ones. And again, on this one, I just have a cute little hello stamp. So put that, it's again, a Paula, um, oh my gosh, now the name has totally escaped me. A photopolymer, thank you. And you would just ink that up, stamp that there, and away you go. So this one, I think I'm just gonna leave blank for right now. So there you have it. Here is the double panel bridge card beautiful using the Echo Park, sorry, Cartabella paper that is the Spring Market and really awesome card. Very awesome and uh, can be certainly used for any number of occasions. So I want to thank you again for stopping by, joining me for this wonderful tutorial and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Don't forget to hit subscribe and press like. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye.